Hello, and welcome back to Scarlet Hollow. So um, I was a little on the fence about what game to play today, and this is, uh, I already had this one loaded, and Dead by Daylight was something that people have requested from me quite a bit lately. So I have every intention of getting to Dead by Daylight at some point. I have never played it before. Not a single solitary second of it, but I have had it. So uh, that's on the docket. It was just taking a very long time to download through to get here in time for this particular stream. So Scarlet Hollow, we're back. So let's go ahead and uh, dive right in. We last left with being in the caves and we just came across the group of children's that are partying down there. Ah, so yeah, we are on chapter two. As far as I know, we're definitely past chapter one uh, because we've got past the demo portion of the game. And uh, yeah, now we are investigating. Well, I'm not sure. You know what? I'm really not sure what we were investigating what happened out in the woods earlier out in part. I think that was part one, uh, possibly part two of our little adventure here. And uh, we seem to have kind of gone off on a little bit of a tangent. Now we're going off uh, uh, for Tommy Knockers and Hi Sammy. Yep, yep. <laughs> Sammy's all about the Knockers Knockers. And we are now in the caves investigating. And yep, so these kids are partying and we're trying to figure out what's going on there. So let's begin with part four here. <clears throat> You breathe a sigh of relief as the tight passageways give way to a small cavern. A group of teens turns and stares at you with annoyance. What the hell are you doing in here? What the hell are you doing in here, you creeps? Creepers? You stalking us? That's a good question, actually. Yeah, creeps. I just said that, Alexis. If I wanted an echo, I'd yell into the Grand Canyon. That's pretty good. Um... Now, this, what are you five? No, I just said that was pretty good. I stand by that. That's pretty good. <laughs> what are you guys even doing down here? This is the most miserable place I've ever been sure to make it. We're looking for your dad. Your dad's looking for you, Rosalina. Mm, oh, oh, God. First choice of the playthrough. And it's already, I'm not seeing one I'm really particularly happy with. Um, yeah, most miserable place I've been in my entire life. Let's do that. Uh, this place isn't miserable. It's cool and rad. Tubular. Who the hell are you exactly? <laughs> so rad. That's Mike, Tabby's cousin. Rosalina, your dad is worried sick about you. And if you ask me, he was right to worry. <clears throat> As I lose my voice. I have a beverage on hand. Why the hell would you think hanging out in an old mine would be a good idea? Is the Maxwell Place not dangerous enough? Yeah, let's give them some dangerous alternatives. Maxwell Place? I hadn't even heard of that one. Let's go. Uh, because no one usually comes in here. Duh. Everyone knows we hang out at the Maxwell Place now. All right. So we had to find a new hideout. Which you instantly found. So I guess we have to find an even more secluded place where we can just be ourselves. There's a good spot in the woods. A um, bunch of animal carcasses. I wouldn't read too much into it, but yeah. That'd be a good spot. I can't believe your dad sent people to follow you, Rosalina. That's messed up. I think that qualifies as harassment. You're right, Becca. It is messed up. I don't need him telling me where I can be. You could at least check in so he knows you're not dead. He loves you and worries about you. He's really not asking for much. Eh, you're telling that to a teenager. Don't you kids have school tomorrow anyway? It's fall break. Duh. And we're not kids. Yeah. We're teens. <laughs> I love that. I'm assuming that that's Beanie Boy. I love him. Oh, I love the Bugs Bunny shirt. That's really good. Yeah. That's rad. Young pups these days. <laughs> Absolutely no respect for the elders. <laughs> Are those canned strawberry margaritas? Where did you even get those? That one's a fucking canned strawberry margarita. That sounds awesome right now. I didn't know such a thing existed. I you know I've had some like strawberry daiquiris. The teens avoid eye contact. Miles tries to melt into the cavern wall. 
It's just a shame that it's a strawberry tequila. <laughs> like, oh, shit, this should be like some kind beer or something. Oh, God. Oh, no, I know that isn't you, Miles. It better not be you. Yeah, whatever, it's me. What are you even doing here? Becca's right. Sounds to me like you're stalking and harassing and all that. You're supposed to be keeping, you're supposed to be minding the store. Oh, it's the asshole kid that wanted me to steal the chips. That's right. It's not like anyone even comes in on Tuesdays and mom's there, so it's fine. Eyes dart uncomfortably around the cavern as Kanika tears into her brother. Oh, it's our brother. That's right. It's not fine. It's extremely not fine. It's super duper extremely 100% not fine. Why do I always have to be the responsible one? Do you know what I would give to be as carefree as you? Want to be as carefree as him? Just let go. Drop it like a bag of bricks. Be carefree. There's nothing stop. There's the toolbox fallacy isn't in play with carefree. I left school so you would have a chance to live your life. And this is what you're doing with it. What would dad think if you could see this? Stealing booze from the family store to dick around in an abandoned mine. Eh, yeah, that's a bit of a dick move. Dad's dead, Kanika, but if he were here, he'd be disappointed you wound up being such a bossy jerk. Okay, if I was ever going to pull the <laughs> dead dead parent party thing that I keep having as an option, it would be here right now. Let's see. <laughs> Who cares if we're having canned margaritas somewhere? Nobody's supposed to bother us. Uh, please, 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 please. Oh, God. Ah. Wanted there to be an option. Oh, you remember the Dead Dead Club? <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, let's see. Uh, maybe can we at least do underage? It's a little safer. She'll let the kids have their fun. Make this decision. Uh, yeah, don't try and twist this around here, sister. That's fucked up. Accept your own shit. You're down here drinking with kids as young as 13. That's messed up. Whatever. Oh, don't. Oh, oh, don't you whatever me. Oh, we're going to have words, you and me. We're going to remember dad, dad, dad club. Ah, yeah, we can hear you. Alexis, don't butt in. I'm trying to make a point. We're perfectly capable of taking care of ourselves. We don't need a bunch of sad 20-somethings telling us where we can be or what we can do. Sad 20-somethings. That shit is pretty, yeah, yeah. I mean, the characters, yeah, it seems pretty accurate. Hey, I'm not sad. Where'd you get that idea? My Stella can't possibly be sad with me around how absolutely rude. These pups need to learn some manners. Uh, running a clickbaity YouTube channel where you're running around in the woods chasing nothing is extremely sad. Running YouTube channels? That's sad. Anyway, my dad is actually a foreman at the continuous mining facility, and he says the only abandoned <laughs> this area because there wasn't enough coal left. Not because it was dangerous or anything, so we can hang out here anytime we want. Becca's dad's right, though. Check out how sturdy this place is. Oh, God. Check out how sturdy this place is. I'm going to kick some supports. <laughs> it's fine. Like a rock. Oh. <laughs> I knew it. Fucking beanie boy. Okay. Oh, was that the knocking we were hearing earlier? One of these days I'll find a real Tommy knocker. Oh my God, Zane, cut it out. Jumping up to hit stuff is extremely eighth grade. <laughs> so eighth grade. We're 10th grade. Uh, no offense, Rosalina. <laughs> None taking the other great creators are totally immature. Not like you, Rosalina. You're chill and smart too. Oh God. All of you quiet. This is serious. This isn't a question of having fun. Miles, you can get in big trouble if anyone found out what you've done. I hope this is the first time, but it's def definitely the last. Let's get out of here before there's a cave-in or something. Someone gets tetanus. Ah, uh, Kanika, you don't have to end their little party. We know Rosalina's safe, and we can just stick around and keep an eye on them. Yeah, <laughs> that's what teenagers want. They want to drink their canned strawberry margaritas while they're being supervised. <laughs> And we can look for ghosts while we're at it. All right. One of us could pop out of here real quick and text Oscar, Oscar to let him know that Rosalina's just out with her friends. You're just saying that to seem cool so we stop making fun of your YouTube channel. <laughs> stop making fun of the YouTubes. That's not not true. <laughs> I also think it's okay for teens to make bad decisions sometimes. 
Anyways, Rosalina isn't going anywhere. She's better off here than at home. Yeah, tell them about where you have to sleep, Rosalina. We've been living in the library for the last couple weeks. Dad says we can't stay at our house. They've got a hot plate and a couple cots in the back rooms. It's actually a pretty slick setup. Or, <laughs> sick setup. Okay, well, either way. No, it isn't, Zane. Rosalina deserves better. Uh, okay, I was being haunted. No. Oh my God, did my dad tell you that? <laughs> Your cat told me. Um. Yeah, you know what? If I'm going to have the speaking with animals trait, I'm going to own it. I'm going to love it. I'm going to be proud of it. I'm not going to hide it. Pixel told me. Deal with it. My cat? It's a long story. It's such a bullshit excuse. I bet he couldn't afford it anymore and is lying to you to save face. What a coward. Becca, I don't think you can, like, say that about other people's families. Isn't that, like, bullying or something? Shut up, Zane. Isn't that bullying? Shut up! Oscar actually invited us to check it out when we saw him earlier today. It could make for a fun non-abandoned coal mine related activity. Just throwing that out there. There's no ghost, Stella. It would be cool if there was, but Becca's right. I just wish he could be honest with me and tell me what's really going on. It's like he doesn't think I can handle it. Like I'm still a little kid. Oh. Um, let's see. What are my options here? Uh, I'm not going to weigh in on this. This is between you and your dad, and the two of you should talk about it anywhere that isn't here. Drossen is doing this to protect you. Your right, Oscar should treat you more like an adult. And how do you know there isn't a ghost? Mm, at this rate, I'd be surprised if your house wasn't haunted. Mm, yep, yeah, that's what I'm going for. Like all the weird shit we've seen. I've seen some real bad things in this town, even if it isn't a ghost, doesn't mean Oscar's lying to you. <laughs> Why are they, all the adults in this town such weirdos? Uh, probably the lead in the water. There is no ghost. There are no such things as ghosts. Oscar is just lying. So what if we break in and uh, the ghost busts the place anyway, just to be sure? Oh my God, Zane, you can't ghost bust if there is no ghost. How much ghost could a ghost bust bust if a bust goes bust? Also, Rosalina lives there. She can't, like, break into her own house. That's actually a point in the favor of, you know, I mean, you, you can't break into your own house. There's no nothing legally wrong with it. There's no ghost that you know of. I bet we could figure out how to bust it if it's actually real. And if it isn't real, well, pff, problem solved. You know, Rosalina, you could always stay over at my house until Stella ghost busts your place. <laughs> We're going to ghost bust the shit out of everywhere. We have a finished basement with a pull-out couch. Why are we talking about this like it's a thing? It's not a thing. There is no ghost. Well, then, okay, let's wrap up this conversation. <laughs> We're in the cave too long. Let's let's have something creepy happen. We're just turning into chapter the part three again. <sighs> Whether there's a ghost in Oscar's house is a question for a time when we're not in immediate danger. Are we in immediate danger? I haven't seen any evidence of that. And to ruin everyone's fun, the answer is probably no, there is not a ghost. Now I'm going to drag my shithead brother back home and suggest you kids leave this empty mine before someone gets black long or gets crushed by rocks or meets any of the many terrible fates people tend to meet in abandoned mines. What was that? Come in. Kanika is interrupted by a pair of thunderous knocks. <laughs> God damn it, Sammy. <laughs> Sammy has <laughs> broken me. <sighs> that wasn't me, I swear. Then what was it? Come on, Stella. Didn't you have a whole list of perfectly natural explanations for scary mind noises? Uh, it's Tommy Knockers for sure. I know this isn't why we came down here, but we got to check it out. Stella. I know, I know, but weird stuff's been happening around here the past few days. What if this is our chance to get an actual solid lead? The stakes couldn't be higher. You have no sense of self-preservation. Yeah. If you guys are going after something spooky, count me in. 
Nobody is going deeper into the mine. Nobody is staying in the mine. We're all leaving. Please, before my heart gives out. It'll be fun, Neeks. <laughs> it will not. Um, okay. Keen eye. You hear something shuffling. You, you hear something over the sound of Stella pleading with Kanika. Something like the shuffling of feet on stone and the whispering of mischievous teens. You turn to see Becca and Alexis gone, and Rosalina anxiously hovering in front of a small tunnel in the cavern wall. She freezes as you notice her. Oh, uh, you know what? I am a little tired of playing it safe. I'm going to poke the bear in this game a little bit. I'm going to wink at Rosalina and gesture towards the tunnel. <laughs> yep. <laughs> oh, this I'm going to regret this one. You, oh, well, I got a trait here. Uh, you blew it, get a bad outcome of something. Oh, God. Okay. I don't think I should have done that. <laughs> I, think, I think this is going to be uh, less, less optimal. You wink at Rosalina and gesture towards the tunnel. Who are you to ruin these kids' fun? She meekly smiles and disappears into the hole. Wait a second. Where'd three of you run off to? Are you kidding me? Wow, Kanika, maybe if you weren't still scared of the dark or whatever, you'd notice them sneak off. I noticed them sneak off, and like, I've been zoning out the whole time we've been, been here. Oh, hey, they must have squeezed through that child-sized tunnel. Oh, no, 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 no. Dang, I've always wondered where that goes. I've never been able to get these hips through there. It's probably for the best, dear. Yeah? Becca's head pops out from the tunnel's entrance. We are not about to let you come in here and ruin our good time. The mine is safe. I've been in here a million times. Yeah, if Becca says we're safe, then we're totally safe. I just, whatever. Come on, you two. I know a cool spot this way. Okay, I think we can catch up with them if we just follow their voices. Do you want to take these two out of here while Mike and I track them down, Neeks? Look, I made a bit of a fuss about not liking this place, but I'm not about to leave you two down too alone down here what if something bad happens and i'm not here to help or what if you run into something totally normal down here that you think is a ghost and i miss out on my chance to figure out what it actually is all right knuckleheads if i don't escort you two out of here myself can i trust you to actually leave and go home yeah sure i can never fit in that tunnel anyway they have crossed a barrier that i cannot so my time here is up i'll put that a little oddly but only because Stella promised me a ghost hunt tomorrow. Whatever, I still have to do my dailies anyway, and the service down here sucks. The editing film? Good, now go. Miles and Zane quietly head back towards the entrance. All right, let's get this over with. Um, what's the point of going after them? If I winked and you're like, hey, off you go, I'm going to at least, you know, uh, I'm going to follow up on this. We could just, all, no, no. All right, let's do this. We can get coffee at Winnie's once we're out of here. My treat. All right. Coffee. Fuck yeah. You and Kanika exchange a glance as Stella ventures forward. Venture deeper into the mine. As the three of you move deeper into the mine, you hear echoes of conversation bounce across the walls. B Becca, why are we doing this again? We can get in so much trouble. Uh, we're doing this because I'm not about to take life advice from a YouTuber and a dropout. Whoa, that is so uncalled for. I didn't drop out. I'm going back to vet school as soon as my family doesn't need me here. I don't know. I think Stella's kind of cool. Her videos are really neat. Validation. Oh, come on. She doesn't even have a sponsor. What kind of a YouTuber doesn't have a sponsor? I mean, not yet, but I'm in talks with meat rice. <laughs> ah, meat rice. And I make plenty of, uh, from ads and donations. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's, that's how we get started. Uh, dang, Stella, meat rice, that's a big deal. <laughs> yeah, meat rice, holy shit. They're on like every big podcast. Thank you, thank you. It feels like a really big step for the channel. <laughs> I am so proud of you, Stella. Uh, okay. Um, I'm just glad that not got some press on. Oh, fuck the press on. Here we go. Another knock. Closer. 
interrupts your thoughts, followed by another, followed by another. Is it just me, or is that knocking coming from the same direction as those kids? It's almost like it could be the kids. Yeah, it's not just you. Okay, that knocking is starting to freak me out. Calm down, Rosalina. It's just mind sounds. <laughs> Did you guys see that? No, it was just a shadow. There's no reason to get freaked out. I saw it. Shut up. There's nothing down here. Stop trying to scare me. Um, are we sure the tunnel they went through was going to meet back up with? I don't care. Or what do they see? That's a good question, but we're not going to find out just talking about it. What if they're the ones doing the knocking? Yeah, the Tommy knockers, those poor kids. I knew coming down here was a bad idea. I can't believe they're making us do this. They better get... We're getting closer. Let's keep moving. Fuck it. We're off. Let's into the, into the fray. There's a time for talking, a time for action. As you progress deeper into the mine, the knocking grows more frequent. It's still distant, but it's much louder than before. The tunnel ends abruptly in front of you. A century-old ladder is the only way forward. In the darkness beyond, you can still hear the echoes of terrified teens, their panicked arguing bouncing down the pitch-black corridors. Lord, tell me we aren't going down in that deep, dark hole. It don't smell right. Well, it looks like the only way forward is that pit, and it sounds like they're somewhere down there. I've never been this far in. It looks like a death trap. Are you sure we should go down there? Yep. You can wait up here, Neeks. I don't think I can climb down and hold Gretchen. All right, I'm not going to argue with you. <laughs> that ladder looks older than all of us combined. Good luck. All right, let's do this. Oh, Gretchen. Stella hoists herself over the edge and begins the climb down. I've got my paws crossed for you two. Yep, in we go. I'm sure it's fine. Stay safe, Mike. I'm pretty sure this is the way back. Come on. Pretty sure? I thought you'd been down here before. Okay, maybe I didn't get this far in, but whatever, it doesn't matter. I definitely remember the way out. Hurry, I don't want to be down here anymore. I thought it was actually this way. Oh, shut up. No one even wanted you to come with us anyway. Becca. Yeah, they're close, all right. It sounds like they're really lost. The voices around you, those of the teens and your companions, sound odd, distant. Step forward. Here we go. There is something in this darkness before you that's much louder, though you don't hear it. That broke my brain. Walk toward it. You don't hear it, but you can feel it in your chest, a desperate need to perceive and be perceived. Wrap yourself in the darkness of the pit. Let's despair, everyone. Hey, are you all right, Mike? Bear witness. Stella reaches for your shoulder, but not before the light from your phone illuminates the chamber. Mike, Mike, are you all right? Oh, thank God you're alive. It looked like you had a seizure or something, and then you just conked out. He's okay, Kanika. Thank God. Okay, don't move a muscle. I don't want you straining yourself while you were still recovering from whatever that was. Kanika and I are going to go get you help. We'll be back soon, I promise. You fade back out of consciousness as your companion clambers out of the pit, intent on your rescue. You raise up on your elbows, head still swimming from the visions, your surroundings coming back into focus. Your head throbs as the knocking continues, now magnitudes more intense than ever. Through it, you once again hear the panicked voices of bickering teenagers echoing down the stone corridors. Becca, you're just getting us more lost. It's this way. If you're so sure, then why don't you just leave? I can't believe I let Alexis talk me into inviting you in the first place. Becca, I'm just trying to help. I said go. Okay, I will. And Alexis, you don't have to go with her. You know that, right? I, uh, yeah, they're all great. So they're going to be splitting up. Yay! Pick a side, Alexis. I'm sure Becca knows where she's going. She wouldn't just lie. Sorry, Rosalina. The increasingly desperate voices of the teens are drowned out by the thunderous knocking. You can practically feel the ground shake beneath you. You can almost see the walls vibrate with the intensity of the hellish sound. 
Uh, Kena, you can't help but notice the timber stretched around you. Oh, I got to get in my narrator to uh, pitch around you, trembling as <laughs> if they were being struck by invisible blows with each knock. They're all that stand between you and the many tons of rock over your head, and they suddenly seem terribly fragile. As you settle more into your senses, Rosalina appears in the passageway to your left. She's out of breath, and it looks like she's been crying. I'm so sorry I snuck off like that. I just wanted Alexis to think I was cool. The entire cavern shakes with the sound of rockfall. This place, at least part of it, is coming apart. Becca and Alexis are still down there. We can't just leave them there. I know which way they were going. They'll listen to you this time, I promise. Please, I don't want them to die. Another dusting of debris falls from the ceiling. You don't have long until this mine collapses on you. Oh, God. Uh, I'm going after him. I'm going after him. This is kind of partly my fault. I could have stopped it, and I didn't. Rosalina runs back the way she came. R Rosalina, you could leave. All right, well, let's follow her. You run after her. The mines shake with each new thunderous blow as bits of rock and dust fall off the ceiling and scatter on the floor around you. I, I thought you knew the way out. I thought you'd been down here a million times already. I was making it up, okay? Yep, yep, yep. Yep. We're coming. Just stay where you are. Can you see those things, Rosalina? Yeah, let's just, uh, let's, let's not, uh, let's not get ourselves too concerned about, yeah. Let's focus on what we can control. Which is our own movement, our own actions. So you push forward, focus on following Rosalina as she darts ahead. Rosalina, you came back. I don't want to die down here. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, grab them and start running. Fuck it. No time to talk. You reach forward and forcefully grab Becca and Alexis, silently pulling them behind you. You quickly push your way back towards the entrance, pieces of falling rock littering the path around you. As you reach the <clears throat> as you reach the pit, you and Rosalina direct Becky and Alexis to the ladder. They start climbing. Climb out of the pit. Here we go. You follow suit and start climbing close behind. Why couldn't you have just listened to somebody other than yourself, Becca? Yeah. I'm sorry, okay? God. Continue towards the entrance. Yeah, let's all stop bickering and fucking move. You push forward, your burning muscles giving way to pure adrenaline. To your horror, you can see cracks forming of the walls of the tunnel. Come on, you gotta go faster. We're almost there, I can see the entrance. Your surroundings quake as the mine collapses around you. Oh, shit. And then the knocking fades and you feel safe, having arrived back at the entrance in one piece. I mean, I'm in one piece. Three of the four of us are in one piece. Well, what the fuck? Rosalina, are you okay? Clearly she's not okay, idiot. Okay, you know what, Becca? Calm your shit. All right, this is all, this is you. All right, don't call anyone else an idiot. You've lost the privilege of the labeling. Fucking... Becca. Shut up, Becca. <laughs> Thank you, Alexis. Thank you. It was your idea to go down there in the first place. This is your fault. Cough. <laughs> this really hurts. Yeah, it looks like it does. <laughs> Bleeding. Them. Yeah. Stella and Kanika pop their heads through the mine entrance. I think I hear voices in there. All right. <laughs> now, I will say, Rosalina better not tell anybody about my wink and, you know, pointing to the, like, you told me it was okay. Uh, yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. Rosalina, can you hear me? We're going to get you out of here, okay? Stella already called an ambulance. <laughs> Thank you, Sammy. Thank you. But that means the cops are going to come. They're going to know I was drinking. Oh, for fuck's sakes. <laughs> Becca. Becca, come on. Your friend's leg is crushed. Take the hit. You're going to know he went in there to drink, right? Becca, that doesn't matter. Alexis being the real friend here. Not gonna, I'm going to say it. Becca, 
can just go kick rocks. Alexis is where it's at. If my dad finds out, he'll kill me. He can't. No. In a pack. Oh, God. If Becca pushes the rocks <laughs> in a panic, Becca runs for the entrance and pushes her way through. Don't worry, Rosalina. She's being an asshole. Yeah, she is. One of us should wait by the gate to make sure they can find us up here. I'm going to go get Tabby. All right, I'll go down to the gate. Rosalina, I'm so sorry. I'll be back soon. We're going to get you out of here and you're going to be just fine, okay? Mike and Alexis will keep you safe until then. Don't worry, pup. I know you're sick, but I'll be here to keep you warm. You want me to gnaw that uh, leg right off there? You'll be free as in no time. Am I going to die? Rosalina, don't say things like that. You're not going to die unless the rest of the uh, mine shaft collapses, which there's only like a one in three chance of that happening. So it's probably mostly okay-ish. <clears throat> Uh, yeah, uh, yep, you're gonna, the ambulance will be here any minute. You're gonna be okay, I promise. Thanks, Mike. Rosalina's breath comes in quick, irregular bursts. If I don't make it, tell my dad I'm sorry. I'm the one that has something to be sorry about. This is all me and Becca's fault. We never should have gone down there. It's not your fault. I went down there because I wanted to, and because Mike gave me a wink and a little sign saying, go for it. <laughs> Rosalina pauses, catching her breath. Thank you, Mike. I'm glad everyone else made it out alive. Couldn't have done it without your help. That's right. So don't you fucking squeal. Um, doesn't seem like she's going to get out. <laughs> safe. Uh, um yep you're very mature for your age let's let's compliment uh and uh and gloss this over here worrying about others at a time like that you're more brave than a lot of adults i know it's true rosalina you're really brave braver than i am and smarter <laughs> you smell better too <laughs> if i hadn't stuck with becca maybe i don't know maybe it would have been different it's just not fair that this happened to you well life's not fair and neither are falling rocks you're the nicest person i know Rosalina, still awake, just hurts like hell. Yeah, yeah, it sure does. Uh, it sure does look like it. Sorry, I shouldn't be pushing you to talk. No, you shouldn't. I'll just hold your hand until they come back with help, okay? Don't go to sleep just yet, pup. Alexis grasps Rosalina's hands. Tears streak down both of their cheeks as you sit in silence together, waiting for the long, anxious moments to pass before help arrives. Some of my men are on the way with rock lifts. We'll get you out of there soon. Mike, I'll be having a word with you. Oh, it's my cousin. Yeah. Yeah, because she can never not be a bitch. They're over here, Earl. Jesus H. Christ, you weren't kidding about an emergency. <laughs> I'll still be a bit for the ambulance. The nearest depot is over in Braver, so it'll be another half hour. Sheriff Earl. Oh, boy. Oh, my God, lady, your leg looks like hamburger. You heard the man. You have half an hour to get out of here. Move it. Rosa, sweetie, I'm here. Dad, I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. You don't have to be sorry. It's okay. We're all here. You can hang on, Rosalina. I know you can. Tabitha's men quickly get to work and manage to pull Rosalina out from the rubble just as the ambulance arrives. Sir, I'm afraid there's no space in the back. What do you mean? I can't ride with her? You're better off driving behind us. We're headed to Brevard, so it's quite a ways. Is she going to be okay? She's going to make it, right? Please, God. Yes, sir. I promise you we're going to do everything we can to keep her stable. Her vitals are looking good. Rosalina, my poor baby, I'll be there as fast as I can, okay? I promise you won't be alone. I love you, Dad. The paramedics load Rosalina into the back of the ambulance and drive off. Oscar approaches you off to the side as the police take talk to Tabitha and her men. I know, right? I'm horrible. That thing on the Spooky Astronauts Discord earlier this morning? Yeah, Mike is awful. What the hell happened in there? Well, certainly wasn't me, winking and pointing. 
Um, or it was Tommy Knockers or something supernatural. Um, I'm so sorry. It's okay. It's okay. At least somebody died. What happened though? Um, Uh, teens being teens. I'm 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 tired of exposing myself as the purveyor of supernatural. No, no, this was no teenager's fault. It's a parent's job to make sure their kids don't deliberately put themselves in these situations. Rosalina was mad at me, and instead of fixing the thing I that was driving her away, I just ignored it. This is my fault. All right, if you want to take it, take it. I don't know. I'm not a therapist. I don't know you people. You want to take the blame? Take the blame. I'm done. Oscar. I'm the parent here. I'm sure she thinks I'm making things up about her house being haunted, but I've seen things that I can't explain and it's only gotten worse over time. My offer still stands to check it out for you once you're back from the hospital, that is. Thanks, Stella. That means a lot. Why can't we go while they're in the hospital? I mean, you're going to be on pre You're going to be in the hospital. House is free. I mean, not that you're living there anyway, but fuck. I've got to go. Mr. Gutierrez, is it okay if I come too? I want to be there for her. Oh, Alexis. Coming in again. Of course, Alexis. It'll be good for her to see a friendly face. That's how to do it. That's how to do it. Be more like Alexis. The two of them head over to Oscar's car and drive off. It's like Goofus and Gallant. Alexis and uh, Becca. Uh, let's see. Do you think Rosalina is going to be okay? Don't care. Uh, I can't believe you let me down there. Don't care. Uh, ditchlings don't care. Your vision don't care. The entities in the mines also don't care. And what happens now? Oh, Jesus. <laughs> Cuz. Hey, what's up? <laughs> what happens now is we have a word. All of us. What the hell were you three doing in there? I thought I'd give you very specific instructions, Mike. Stay in one place while I finish my meeting. I was only gone. Yeah, I'm going to be. Yeah, I'm not. I'm going to not being quite so polite here uh, at the site of what was almost a deadly mine collapse. Tabitha, come on. It's not Mike's fault. Stella's right. If it's anyone's fault, it's yours. You have an abandoned mine on your property that was barely even boarded up. That's fucking right. You tell her, Kanika. Coming through. It was only a matter of time until something like this happened. Are we, are we fighting? If anything happens to Rosalina, it's on you, Tabitha Scarlet. Using the full name. How, how dare you? It's not like I put up a big neon sign saying cool place for teens to hang. It's clearly not safe. You three went up here with them. Why didn't you do something to get them out of there sooner? Um, cool at Tabitha were probably the reason you have only one can in it. Tabitha is just another coal baron. There's no point in arguing with her. Fuck yeah. I'm done. The only thing she really cares about is covering her ass so she doesn't lose any money. Whoa. How could you say something like that? Of course I care about people. You have no idea how hard this job is. <laughs> the sacrifices I've had to make to keep it running. Guys. But I have to do it for the people of this town. Sacrifices, huh? As if everyone in this town hasn't had to make sacrifices. Guys! <laughs> the real question is, who those sacrifices hurt? Is it you or the kids who managed to wander into an unsecure mine? Or maybe it's all the workers you've been laying off. People gossip, Tabitha. If you want to talk about sacrifices, maybe you should sell that giant house and cut yourself a smaller paycheck. Goddamn right. Thank you, Kanika. Once again, I think the my favorite human character in all of this. Gretchen and the possum. Yeah, obviously my favorite characters. You don't know anything about me. Yeah, well, what's the point of arguing like this? I know it can feel cathartic to point fingers and yell, but what's going to accomplish other than bruised egos? You're right. I don't know. Yeah. Come on, we're leaving. Now hold on a minute, Miss Scarlet. <laughs> Mind if we have a quick word with your cousin, miss, in private? Oh, that's right. I'm still under suspicion for murder. <laughs> I had forgotten about that. <clears throat> okay, well, let's address this. <sighs> okay, fine. Just make it quick. And don't you dare try to pull anything on him. He did nothing wrong here. 
Ladies, I'm afraid that means you too. Don't you need to talk to us? We witnessed this too. Oh, sure, but that can wait. We know where to find y'all. What a coincidence running into you two nights in a row. This is my colleague, Deputy Derrickson. Pleased to meet you, Mike. Apologies for my absence yesterday. It was my special bowling night. You see, a man has to have his me time. But I was briefed on the events of last night, even though we're still not sure if what went uh, on could be considered a crime. I'm pretty sure. Well, I don't know about. No, it wasn't a crime. He blew his own head off. It was suspicious. But yeah, okay, so I'm of the stance. No, no, this wasn't a crime, Officer Mustache. Duke has been missing since then, though we found neither hide nor hair of him. Could be he's just on an extended hunting trip. Perhaps it might have been wise not to leave his fucking body in the woods overnight. Holy God, the people in this game. It wouldn't be the first time he's done something like that. I was told the footage showed his supposed body, but we couldn't get the camera working, so there's no way to confirm until we track him down. Yeah, well, somebody might have stolen the memory card, so fuck. Now, I understand both of these were terribly unfortunate accidents that had nothing to do with you being in the area, but as officers of the law, you have to understand we get a little suspicious when we see the same face multiple times in a row. Well, I've seen your face multiple times in a row, Higby a little suspicious and uh, we have to ask what exactly were those teenagers doing in a shuttered mine owned by your family as if I have fuck all to do with any of this and why were you down there with them all right I have a little bit of fuck all to do with a little bit of this I'll get to your questions but you also need to talk about the man that's been stalking me no these guys aren't gonna give me diddly shit on Wayne this town is haunted they're not gonna care you're out of your depths here they don't see it why are you asking me this? It's a mind collapse. Uh, no, we saw some teens, so we went after them. It wasn't for me. They'd all be dead. I don't have to talk to you. I know my rights. Remain silent. All right. We, have the, we saw the teens sneak in. Sammy and I agree. We were just trying to do the right thing. Of course, of course. Very noble of you. Pardon our questions. Just trying to gather all the facts, you see. Just being thorough. Our duty as officers of the law. Yeah, you've been super fucking thorough so far. You are uh, you exemplify the uh, the officer mentality and peacekeeping and so on. Yeah. Well, if there's nothing more you can tell us, I suppose we'll let you get on about your evening. But we may be in touch. Have a good one. You are a lot more interested in me than you were in the dead body that was reported. Just saying. Deputy Derrickson tips his hat to you. The two officers wander back toward the mine. Derrickson taking notes as they examine the scene. You make your way towards Stella and Kanika. I just can't believe two nights in a row. Is it my fault, Neeks? Mm -hmm. Stella, no, this is all just an awful coincidence. It's not your fault. Oh, hey, guess the cops are done with you? What, are they going to take you in for being president and at present at an accident? Sorry if they gave you a hard time. Small town cops, you know. Uh, actually, I do, yeah. Always blame everything on drifters, even acts of God, I guess. Excellent. You didn't get arrested. Now, come on. Let's get back to the estate. I'd like to get some rest before I have to deal with the fallout of everything that happened tonight. I'll see you tomorrow, okay, Mike? I'd really rather you didn't. If, he's, if you're going to run around almost getting killed every night, keep my cousin out of it. Your cousin is an adult, Tabitha. He can make his own decisions. Not while he's under my... You know what, Kanika? You got a, uh, a couch for me to crash on? I don't want to be under this roof anymore. As if to illustrate her point, Tabitha grabs your arm, dragging you towards the car. You kidnapping me? Fuck off. Don't be ridiculous. I'm taking you home. You can practically feel Tabitha roll her eyes as she drags you to the car. Tabitha doesn't say a word as the car cuts along the darkened road. You know what? The only reason I'm going back to the house is because I have an opossum there with my... He's my friend. And I want to say hi to him. You're trying to keep an eye on the surrounding wilderness as she drives, wary of what may lurk behind the tree line. Um, how are you holding up? <laughs> I don't think you want me to answer that question. 
Um, yeah, right in silence. She can suck the lack of conversation. Your eyes wander back to the tree line as you and Tabitha slink back into the silence. Where's Dustin? I want to see Dustin. You once again cross the threshold into the estate, the musty stench of the decaying mansion greeting you with its undertones of mildew and wood rot. Well, this day was a lot more stressful than it needed to be, and I'm sure it's the precursor to a horrifically stressful week. I'm going to bed. I suggest you do the same. Um. Yeah, it seems like you hate me. I mean, you have since the beginning. I'm only now starting to be a little bit of an instigator here, and I cop to that. I own it. But I wasn't the one that fired first shot. In fact, I have been a consummate professional, a very pro polite guest, and a welcoming family member. I can only take so much shit before I start giving it back. That's what I'm saying. I don't hate you. I'm just trying to get through the week. Well, maybe you just start trying to act like you don't. I just don't want you to get hurt. I'm tired. I'm going to sleep. And rip. Tabitha turns and makes her way up the stairs. Her posture defeated. I have defeated her. <laughs> I've defeated her emotionally. <laughs> yeah. Turn in. You head up your room to turn in. You collapse in Tabitha's gut dusty guest bed, your head empty of thoughts. After your time in the Shaw mine, you barely even notice the dust. Your phone buzzes on the table. Kanika sent a message to Stella. Y you, uh, Stella and you. Okay, <laughs> Stella, comma, you. Y'all, those are those things, right? Kanika sends a picture of a pair of ditchlings by the side of the road. Oh, I saw them again, too. Shit. Another picture, this time of them staring from a tree. What the fuck? Those things are definitely not hairless monkeys or raccoons or whatever. I don't know what the hell they are. I guess there's more to them being here than the mine collapse. No way I'm sleeping tonight. She must spell tonight. Just saying. You think about looking out the guest room window, but at this point, you're too exhausted to leave your bed. The adrenaline from this evening is finally wearing off, replaced by a creeping exhaustion that threatens to overwhelm you. Your limbs feel heavy, your eyelids slipping down over your eyes as even <clears throat> the, your eyes, even as you stare down the ominous pictures of your on your phone. If it weren't for the pit of dread bawling in your stomach, you would almost certainly nope, I'm reading words that aren't there. You would almost feel comfortable as you settle in between the covers, your tired bones sinking into the decrepit mattress. When you close your eyes, you can see Ro Rosalina's face, twisted with pain, staring at you with tear-streaked cheeks, trapped by her powers beyond her control, terrified of what her now uncertain future would hold. Your eyes shoot back open, your heart pounding as the door to your room swings open. Just the cat. It's always just the cat. Don't read into this. The woman kicked me out. Just want a warm place to sleep. It's nice to see another living being, even one as unfriendly as Tabitha's cat. The comfort of her presence sets your mind at ease, and you finally slip into a deep sleep. I don't trust that cat. I want to pet it. I do not trust it. What's this? What's happening? There's a hole there. It's like Tales from the Crypt opening. This is the end of episode two. Episode three awaits. Proceed if you dare. Well, we're only 50 minutes in. We've still got a little bit of playtime. Let's keep going. If you'd like to continue with the world state in episode three, please save your game now. All right. Saving.
and continue. Would you like to see a recap before starting episode three? No, we just played it. So no. Sunshine filters in through the dusty windows of the estate as the dull aches of last night's activities throb in and out of focus. I want to see Dustin. You managed to survive a second night in the town of Scarlet Hollow. As you pull yourself out of the bed, you can feel the soot and grime of the shawl mines still stuck to your skin. Um, let's take a shower. It's a good idea to shower. Oh, maybe not in this shower. Kind of really did do wish that I asked Kanika if there was a couch I could crash on. The water is hot and surprisingly enough, clean. As steam fills your lungs and soot, lungs and soot washes down the drain, you... Ah, uh, think about Roman Lynch and the image of a foot bear. There's no barely a thing about Duke and the image of him lying there slumped against a tree. Scrub feverishly, trying to scrape the memories from his skin. Think about Sybil's warning. The worst is yet to come. Think about Wayne and wonder how many times he's watched you on scene. Think about someone special. <laughs> yeah, we're in the shower. Let's think about someone special. Think about finally being out of his hell on life. Let's think about someone special. You just think about Stella, your intrepid cryptid hunting companion and everything. <laughs> Kanika, the resident goth and one of the most level-headed and fashionable people in town. Avery and their calming presence standing in contrast with the coming storm. Uh, Oscar, the shy and handsome town librarian stuck in a haunted house. Reese, Stella's mysterious. And Wayne, I can, I can think of someone special. I can think of Wayne and how many times he's watched you unseen. He could be watching me now. That could be the, that could be the thing I'm thinking about. Uh, I'm thinking about Kanika. <laughs> You're done here. You turn off the faucet and dry yourself off. I bet that's going to come into play. Like, I thought about you in the show. <laughs> Check on Dustin. Fuck yeah. Oh, there's two Dustins. There's two of them. Morning, Dustin. Who's your friend? I love you both. Her name, Mom. Hi, Dustin's mom. She'd come to visit. Hi, Dustin, Mom. <laughs> <laughs> Stay with Dustin until glass house empty. Thank you, human, for taking care of my boy. What happened to your glass house? Asshole squatter move in. Kick Dustin mom out. <laughs> asshole squatter. He's trying to eat mom squatter evil. Squatter may be asshole, but squatter not evil. I just try to survive just like all. Dustin mom is a wise Dustin mom. She is wise and kind. She's imparting that onto Dustin. Dustin still have much to learn. Um, I had a rough night. Can you console me? Yeah. Make me feel better, Dustin's. Was it because of Cat Monster? Dustin was scared too. <laughs> hey, if Cat Monster wants to eat Dustin, Cat Monster will have to go through Dustin Mom first. Dustin Mom will kill. I love Dustin and Dustin Mom. <laughs> then we eat like kings. This nature. <laughs> nature is hardcore. Um, I gotta go. Bye. Okay. <laughs> I love them so much. That the uh, Dustins are worth the price of admission on this game alone. Uh, yeah, let's look out the window. You hold your breath and approach the bedroom window. After finding that boat print in the viscera in the garden yesterday, you can't help but anticipate something staring back at you. It's the same view. Wait, isn't there a way I can lower this? Period, not period, not. Um, there's a way I can lower the thing. Um, controls. Um, skips dialog when help down. Hides the user interface. H. Okay, so now, okay. Can I see anybody? It's the same view. Hide. Can I see anybody actually looking at me? Nope. All right. Well, that was fun. Uh, check the closet. Yeah, let's check the closet. See if that, yep, the doll's still there. Nope, it hasn't. Turn back. That doll is going to move. I fucking know it. Message group chat with Stella and Kanika. Text Stella, text Kanika. Head downstairs. Um... What do you think, Sammy? Next, text them both or text Kanika? Because those are pretty much the, the options. Or leave. All right. Texting Kanika. Um, 
Send her a photo of an exhausted Ben Affleck. <laughs> I would, you know what? Okay, so there's a part of me that wants to like, de, you know, dive into that. Uh, with the, you know, want to hang out before the Reese goes hunting, but I really do kind of, I want the story to progress. There's been a lot of text, a lot of verbal stuff, and I kind of want the story to progress. So here we go. The exhausted Ben Affleck. <laughs> It'll probably be a bit before you get a response. All right. Uh, uh, yep. <laughs> That's all I wanted. You enter the kitchen to find your cousin in the midst of devouring a pint of banana chocolate chunk. God, that sounds good. That's a good flavor of ice cream. She isn't alone. Frau Frau glares at you from her usual spot on the counter as a redheaded woman busies herself trying to tidy as best as she can. Vile woman destroys the natural order of my kitchen. Is she German or French? The natural order of my kitchen. Yeah, it could be French. Tabitha's gaze swivels from the woman to you, her glare intensifying. Bonjour, Fla Frau. Look, bonjour, sacre bleu. Do you not think you can just bonjour to me just because I slept at the foot of your bed last night? I still despise you. Trying that out for size. Three humans at once. This is abhorrent. Your stink will linger here for hours. How am I to bear it? I see. Talking to my cat again. Are you sure you didn't get hit on the head last night? You don't say good morning to your pets? I always make... I, I'm liking this redheaded woman. Gotta say. One sentence in, I'm liking her. I always make sure to tell my talk to my farm cats and alpaca like their people. Like her even more. Two sentences in. Like her a lot. To me, they kind of are. Three sentences. I'm in love. Um, let's see. Nobody lives out in the garden, right? The apostles of the squad. The apostles in my dresser told me someone's squatting in the greenhouse. I like her as a person, as a friend. Okay. The red, you know what I'm gonna, there's like a soul simpatico thing going there. <laughs> Ugh, this place is infested, those things. Oh, I didn't think I was telling that to Tabitha. I was just telling that to the cat. Oh, well, shit. Oh, be nice. I think they're cute. Yeah, let's... Red-headed woman has nailed it. <laughs> anyway, no one lives in the garden. Why are you even asking out with it? And I don't want any more of this talking animals nonsense. Um. Now, I said that I would own it my talking to animals thing, but Tabitha, I got no reason to let her in on any of my life. There is like, there's no confidence. There's, I don't want her to kick the possums out is what I'm saying. Um, dresser possum. Yeah. What about, uh, 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 is funny, funny dresser possum. Uh, nothing to read into that. Don't open the dresser. I'm just going to pretend you didn't say any of that. That's probably for the best. Dustin and Dustin mom will thank you. Um, uh, hi, I'm Mike. Good morning. I'm Janie. Just here to do my little weekly cleaning. Whatever cleaning Miss Tabitha will let me do at least. I could have this place looking brand new, you know. I think that might take a little bit of money. Don't go making any big renovations or moving anything around. I like knowing where my stuff is. Okie dokie. It's so nice to finally meet you, Mike. I mean, I guess I did meet you on Monday when you popped into the diner. Uh, okay. Janie, but seeing someone somewhere and meeting them face to face are two completely different things, I suppose. I, it's, thanks. <laughs> All I'm trying to say is it's wonderful to finally actually meet you. And I'm so happy part of the family here is here is here to keep Miss Tabitha company with what with everything that's Janie. Oh, I'm sorry, Miss Tabitha. Am I being too much again? No, you're not being too much. And don't let her tell you that you are. Don't you hide for her. Um, oh, are we having ice cream for breakfast? Um, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Staring silence. Done. Good. You're up. Tabitha takes one last spoonful of ice cream, then discards the empty container, turning to you with her trademark scowl. Let's get going. I've got an errand to run in town, and every time I've left you here alone, something terrible wounds up happening. So you, well, terrible's wound up happening. So you're coming with me. The fuck I am. 
Um, but I haven't had breakfast. Should have thought about that before sleeping in so late. Oh, God, what a bitch. Janie, lock up when you leave, please, and don't go rearranging anything. I'll know. Oh, God, what a bitch. As you're ready to leave, Janie approaches from the far side of the kitchen. Tabitha remains between the two of you, impatiently tapping her foot. Oh, Mike, before you go, I heard about what happened last night. I'm so sorry you got caught up in that. I'll be praying for Oscar and poor little Rosalina. They're such sweethearts. Couldn't have happened to nicer people. You only come in, well, what's the, what do you do with the rest of your time? Yeah. Oh, odd jobs, mostly weeding gardens, cleaning houses, watching kids, that sort of thing. My husband's the pastor, so a lot of my time spent at the church and doing things for the community. She's lovely, Sammy. She's a lovely person. Poor Daniel. He's going to be absolutely stir crazy since we moved. He's been going absolutely. But with nobody really attending sermons all. It would probably do him a lot of good to talk to you through your worries. Um, <laughs> yes, yes. Titties. All right. <laughs> um, sounds wonderful. Thank you. Really. Yeah, let's just be super nice and polite. She deserves it. She has earned our respect and our pleasantness. Of course, he's always ready and willing to talk with people. So feel free to stop by the church anytime. The door is always open. Um, you should get out of town. Sorry, Tabitha. Yeah, sorry, Tabitha is so mean to you. I'm standing right here. I fucking know it. Oh, you don't have to apologize for her. I knew what I was getting into when I took the job. Ah, oh, nice. Well, she's really pretty funny once you get to know her. The nastiness is mostly for show. I'm not going after her. Sammy. <laughs> Friend. See? Friend friend <laughs> not going after her i used to be her babysitter so i've known her ever since she was an awkward kid and once you know someone like that it's hard to be intimidated by them i'm gonna stop the two of you right there i'm gonna keep talking you can try and stop me mike i'm busy and not in the mood to watch you and janie gossip about me we're leaving all righty then be safe out there you two tabitha practically drags you from the estate one hand clasped firmly around your arm she continues to drag you all the way to the car and from there into town. The ride to town is uneventful. Your cousin unsurprisingly more focused on the road than on making conversation. All right, we're just popping into the general store for a few minutes. Um, no, I don't, I'm not going to explore that. I don't care. Yeah, say nothing. You and Tabitha turn as the door to the general store burst open. A flustered Kanika exits, shouting behind her. Fine, okay, keep coddling him. Keep letting him get away with stuff you never would have let me so much as think about. I'm sick of carrying this family. Uh-oh. Kanika storms off, the door slowly drifting shut behind her. Ugh, other people in their drama. If more people kept things to themselves, they'd be a lot happier. This bitch. Out of curiosity, would you call yourself happy? Yeah. Uh-huh. What did I just say? Yeah, I'm happy. Whatever. We're burning daylight. Come on already. The bells of the general store chime as you cross the threshold. The smells of old wood and steamy herbal tea flood your senses, making you feel instantly at home. Mm, at home. Good morning, you two. Hope you're doing well after last night's activities. Morning. Is the new blend ready? Of course. Mike, if you'd like to keep Miles company, Tabitha and I will be just a minute. Um, is Kaneko okay? Of course, she just needs time to cool down. Emotions are a little high considering everything that happened yesterday. She'll settle down soon enough. I'm just glad both of my little ones made it out okay. Sybil motions for Tabitha to follow, and they both disappear into the tea room, closing the door behind them with the tinkling of bells. Fucking get out of there! She's busy. She's in a different room. He and I try and listen in, chat with Miles, quietly wait. Oh, God, fine, try and listen in. I mean, they're clearly hiding something. Subtle. Oh, fuck off. I know it took a little longer than you'd hoped, but this was fairly short notice. 
Sybil pauses and a moment later you hear footsteps move to the far end of the tea room. She and Tabitha re resume their discussion, their voices hushed. You can only make out bits and pieces of what they're saying. Is there? Yes, make sure this is all. Not inside. Outside then, don't assume you know. I know what I'm... Your listening session is halted as the tinkling of bells announce another patron. Oh, excuse me. Wait, you're Mike, aren't you? I sure am. How nice to meet you. Oh, it's Bo. We heard about Bo. The policeman told me what you saw. You saw what happened to my daddy. Oh, awkward. Um... Yeah, I'm just going to stay silent. I watched his dad blow his own head off and the cops think he went for a stroll. I got nothing to add to this. It's okay to be quiet. Those woods can be awful scary, especially if you're not used to them. And I know you did your best to help. <laughs> Mama's pretty broken up about it. I'm trying to hold it together since I'm the man of the house now, but it ain't easy. Me and him was supposed to bring Big Betty to the state fair this week, but now he's gone. And as of this morning, so is she. Oh. No. Oh. So I suppose if I'm not going to the fair, I may as well make myself useful and get out in the woods to look for whatever is left of my daddy. You was there, right? Could you tell me where to look so I can try and find him? Oh, God, I don't know if I should be sending people out there. Oh. You know what? <laughs> Say it's dangerous? All right. I was going to send him. <laughs> You're nicer than me, Sammy. I ain't a stranger to what those hills have to offer. Daddy always said I wouldn't have nothing to fear so long as I learned how to use my fists. So he taught me how to do all that. Yeah, I don't know if your fists would do a whole lot. Those woods might still get scary sometimes, but I reckon there's no better way to show my daddy I've learned those lessons than to go out there and find them. That's... Um... Your dad was killed by ditchlings. I ain't never heard of a ditchling before, but whatever they are, they won't stop me from trying to find them. All right. You know what? There you go. He died on the northeast wedge of town off the Ass China Trail. <laughs> Forgot about the Ass China Trail. Oh, God. Thank you, Mike. I appreciate you trying to help us out. I don't rest easy knowing he's out there somewhere all by his lonesome. I tried. I warned him. And please tell Miss Scarlett I'm sorry about her mama. Tabitha and Sybil are still in the tear room. Your phone buzzes. Sliding into the DMs, are we? Ooh, I got a response. She liked my 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 sad Ben Affleck. <laughs> if you want to hang out, I'm parked in the abandoned lot by the gas station. It's hard to miss. You have plenty of time before dinner at Reese's house. Yeah, go after Ganigo. Here we go. God, this just turned into a dating game. Ah, you follow the directions Kanika texted you and soon find yourself in a disused parking lot hidden behind the shuttered shops on Main Street in a windowless in a windowless van. She's sitting alone in the back of her van, but she notices you lurking on the edge of the parking lot and waves, her troubled expression brightening into a smile. Hey, you made it. Hop on in. There's something different about Kanika today. She seems tired. Her usual alertness gone and her eyes unfocused as they settle on you. Sorry if this is a weird place to hang out. I'm uh, taking a mental health day. I kind of need some space away from the store. Plus, I feel like ass. I'm exhausted and a little out of it. Must have inhaled too much coal dust last night. Um, Sammy, guide me. Sammy. All right, <laughs> I'm taking that as a flirt. <laughs> well, you look great. How you doing, girl? Uh, are you trying to lay down the charm on me? Maybe it's working. Keep it up and see. Oh, damn. Oh, damn. In like Flynn. Uh, okay. Uh, do you think something in the mines made you sick? Sounds like you're having some kind of argument. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> 
Let me be a little bit charming and flirt. So you're fighting with your mom, huh? <laughs> yep. She sighs. Oh, God. No, man, I really did put a damper on it. Yeah, family stuff. Are you sure you want me to get into it? I don't want to dump all that drama on you. I'm here to listen to you. Um, well, you know, okay, yeah, let's, uh, let, let, let pull it back, let's dial it down from a, uh, from a five to a three, only if you're comfortable sharing. Uh, let's see, yeah. It would also be a relief to talk about with someone. Thanks, Mike. Especially since you were there last night. <laughs> Sammy, I love you. Uh, so you know how it felt to survive something like that unscathed, and to know not everyone was so lucky. So after I got home last night, I had to deal with my brother. He really made me feel like I was the bad guy, especially once we got home. Like what happened to Rosalina was not my fault. Or it was my fault. And mom didn't help. She never does. She always takes the side saying he's young and allowed to make mistakes. Mistakes I can never dream of getting away with. I think we had this conversation before. When we told her what happened, she just says the same shit she always does about family and getting along and sent us to bed with tea. Her favorite method of conflict resolution. As if a little hot leaf water ever really helped anybody. Um, your fault. That's rich, right? It kind of boiled over this morning, though. <clears throat> oh, top one. <laughs> oh, yeah. She wound up blaming me for letting Miles sneak off into the mine, saying that if I'd been working like I was supposed to, he wouldn't have gotten into trouble. Like I'm supposed to be in charge of a sullen teenager every second of the day while working. And it's not like I don't care. I'm always stressing out about that kid or the store, or the million other things I'm supposed to deal with. None of this should be on me. These are the best years of my life, and I'm wasting them in this dying town, keeping a store afloat while my mom just messes around with her little herbs or whatever. I made it out of here, damn it. I've gotten into grad school. I was good at it. I was graduating with honors and everything. But dad died, and I came back for the funeral, and then I had to stick around just to help mom sort out a few things. First it was a month, then two, and now here I am, over a year later, and those few things became my life. I don't want to be this person. If I could, I'd just drive in this van all the way to the coast, lie down on the beach, and never come back. Um... Yeah, I want to give her a hug, too. Kenai, sounds like you already know what you want to do. Kanika's quiet for a moment, staring at the overgrown parking lot. Yeah, you're right. Maybe tomorrow. Stella made all those ghost hunting plans. I can't just skip out on her like that. Oh, it's always going to be tomorrow. But yeah, tomorrow. Definitely tomorrow. You should come with me. <coughs> God, and of course, I feel like an asshole. Oh, Thunder, make plans to leave town. Oh, neat. You got an objective. Uh, for talking about all this now, the morning after a mine collapse. But I guess that's what pushed this all of this over the edge. Nothing like a major disaster to make you question the direction your life has taken, right? Uh, I wouldn't have met you if I hadn't struck around. Not at all bad. Yeah. You're right. I guess some good things can come up for messed up situations. I'm serious, by the way. If I leave town tomorrow, when I leave town tomorrow, you should come with me. Um, I have no real allegiance to this place. Everyone can go get fucked. Um, wait, I don't have an option of saying, hell yeah, we should leave. Why leave tomorrow though? If you're serious about it, we should get, that should be today. Uh, the, the, a little pushy, a little pushy. You think you're contagious? You think? All right. I can't let Stella down like that. And before you say anything, this is different than the stuff with my family. All right. I like Stella. Okay. So that's fair. Uh, burp. so ghost hunting tonight. It's why I'm still here, right? I'm pretty sure there's no such thing as ghosts, but I'm starting to lose a little bit of that conviction. After last night and seeing those ditch things in the road, Kanika visibly shudders. Here's hoping it's just the pipes or something. I don't need to see any more supernatural shit this week. I'm just looking forward to helping Oscar feel safe in his house. I'm such a guy. I'm such a good guy. This is, yeah. Same here, that poor kid. I just hope this hasn't been too traumatic for her. <laughs> um, all right. Share a quiet moment. A soft breeze blows across the lot as you and Kanika share a quiet moment. Both your phones buzz in unison. You reach for them at the same time. Oh my God, I overslept. Almost forgot. It's Mayor Jimmy Day. Good excuse to head over to the library. We should check in with Oscar. Meet y'all there in half an hour. Wow, I totally blanked on the Mayor Jimmy thing. It's almost like we just went through a traumatic... 
thank you, Sammy, event or something, and I'm not on top of my schedule. But Stella's right. This gives us a, a chance to meet up with Oscar and Mayor Jimmy's awful cute. Let's not show that side of ourselves. Let's not be that guy. Let's be confident. Um, yeah, silent. That's fine. <laughs> Anyways, we'll chill with Mayor Jimmy. Go to Reese's for dinner. Then do some ghost hunting tonight. Thank God we have so much going on today. I really needed the distraction. And thanks for letting me vent earlier. It helped. Shall we? Let's go to the library. It's busier than usual, and a small crowd has formed in the corner of the main foyer. And I think that will do it for this particular stream. Thank you for joining me here in Scarlet Hollow Part 4. I might be streaming tomorrow. In fact, I probably will be streaming tomorrow. Just the question is, what game? I am possibly going to be... Um, doing dead by daylight. I might continue Scarlet hollow. If you have an opinion on it, please feel free to drop it. Uh, otherwise check me out uh, again on Twitch at rotted underscore gaming or on YouTube at rotted gaming. So thank you very much for joining me and I will talk to you all later. Have a great day, everybody. And uh, okay. We'll see this out uh, tomorrow. Scarlet hollow. Meet me there, Sammy. We'll do it. It'll be a great time. All right. Take care, everybody. I'll talk to you soon. <laughs>